Okay, slightly over the center here. Touch it gently. Oh, wow, guys, look at that. Hey, everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to my Fluid Art Channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm doing another spin painting today. This time I'm doing a spin swipe because what is a spinning series without a spin swipe? I don't know, it's not a very good spinning series. So I'm doing a spin swipe today. So I've got my smaller spinner, my cake spinner, because this is a 10 inch canvas. I have not yet mastered a spin swipe on a canvas that's terribly large. In fact, my best ones have been on little six inch wooden rounds. So this one is bigger than what I've done before. I didn't feel good enough going to a 12 inch. So we're gonna try it on a little 10 inch square. Also, bloom swipe, spin swipe, but this isn't the bloom, the official bloom pouring mixture. This is not the house paint and polycrylic or house paint and Joe Sonia's. This instead is Molly's uh, pouring medium, Molly's artistry, we all know her. So she uses a mixture of Floetrol and gloss medium and varnish that she does for a lot of her pours. Um, obviously not her like Dutch pours and stuff, but for ring pours and for all of her wonderful swipes that she does, this is her pouring medium. And I've tried it once and I loved it, so I wanna do it again. So all of these paints are mixed with that pouring medium. And I will link her video below that shows how she makes her pouring medium. Though what it is, is just, it's two parts American Floetrol to one part gloss medium and varnish, the Creative Inspirations brand. That is, that is the recipe. She no longer uses the GAC 800 and neither do I. So that's what these are mixed with. They're more or less, uh, one part paint to two parts of that pouring medium. And then I've added just a little bit of water so they weren't quite so thick. It's still quite a thick consistency, um, but it's not really, really heavy. I have, as a base coat, I thought, let me do something on a dark base instead of a light base. So I've mixed up some of my dark navy and I've gone ahead and painted my sides with it. So you can see it's this beautiful blue color, but along the corners where it's gone on uh, heavier. It's quite dark, almost black. So that's what it's going to be. It's going to be close to a black, but with a bit of that bluish undertone, which makes it turn not gray. Because when you have black and then you have lighter colors that added to it, it just kind of turns gray. If you have a really dark navy, it gives off the impression of black, but then as lighter colors mix with it, it turns really beautiful. So that's my base color. Then I have some white, I have gray purple, uh, what is this? Light magenta? I'll have all the information down in the video description. Then I have a metallic gold and I have two TLP pigments here. This one is sea glass. Beautiful. And then this one looks white, but this is an interference pigment, which is why I wanted a dark base. So this one shimmers, uh, this like a baby blue, kind of a purplish light blue over black. It's really, really beautiful. And to mix up these pigments, because the pouring medium is not as thick as the full paint, I used Liquitex Basics Gloss Gel along with then the pouring medium to turn this into a paint that's the same consistency as the other ones. So these ones, it was more or less one part of the gel to three parts of the uh, Floetrol mixture. Whereas with the paints, it was about one to two. And then last but not least, I have my cell activator. This is Amsterdam Titanium White mixed one to three with Australian Floetrol. If you don't have Australian Floetrol or can't afford it, check the video description and you will find a link to some cheaper alternatives. But that is gonna make some amazing lacing, hopefully. Now, with my spinner, this is not attached, so I do need to tape this down so it doesn't go flying off of the table. So I'm just gonna use some blue tape and stick that down. Why did I paint my sides? I painted my sides because this blue color, it's nice and dark, but the blue is somewhat transparent. And so on the vertical edge of the sides, I wasn't sure 
whether it would completely cover. So just by adding an initial layer, even if it's not like a full dark layer, uh, that will make it much less likely that the white is going, the white of the canvas is going to show through as the rest of the paint covers it. All right, let me get this totally centered. Okay. That looks pretty good. Okay, canvas is on the spinner, got my colors, let's make a painting. So the last detail to decide is which of my palette knives do I use? Because this one, this is this sort of football shaped one. This is the kind that Lisa Marvin likes to use for her spin swipes. And that has worked really well for me on small ones. This is like a cake spatula. And the one time that I tried it, it didn't really work that well. But I don't know if that was because I had other issues going along or because the uh, palette knife itself is the problem. So I think this one, because it has a pointy tip, I think that's going to make a better spiral, but it is also smaller, and this is a bigger surface, which means it's going to have to spin around more times to cover the entire area. Huh. I think I think I'm going to try it with the small one, and if I'm having trouble getting it getting enough pattern, then I'll use the big one. But I've had good success with the smaller one in the past. Okay, so I'm going to start with some pillow paint. And I mixed this paint today, so it's going to have a lot of air bubbles in it. Not the best plan. I just want to get the majority of the canvas covered. Try to pop some of these air bubbles. Not going so well. Let me try a quick torch. Okay, I am going to put some paint over the corners because I know that that's going to be the most difficult area to get covered. So having that covered in advance will help our design spread all the way. Okay, corners are covered. Let me torch again. Okay, it's popping some. I'm seeing them get reduced. For all of my smaller cups, I'm going to bang them. If you tap them on your tabletop, it'll make the bubbles rise to the surface and pop. I'm going to pour a little bit more pillow right here in the middle, just so we've got plenty of paint on the canvas. Okay, time to put the colors in the middle. So, I want a little bit of white in the middle. Oops. And I'm going to do this as a like a center pattern, but not a really like tight stacked puddle. It's going to be kind of a messy puddle in the middle and then it'll get swiped out to the outsides. So I'm starting with some white. That'll help some of my other colors stand out 
on the blue. And I'm going with some pinks and purples today because Valentine's Day is not far away. And when you do, when you do YouTube, it seems like you always make videos for the theme of the holiday so that they come out right on the holiday. But because I'm making tutorials for you all to follow, perhaps, if I'm going to make a Valentine's kind of a pour, shouldn't I make it before Valentine's Day so that you guys can paint it on Valentine's Day? That's what I'm thinking anyway. So I'm doing this a little bit in advance. Maybe get you all thinking of certain color combinations. Okay, so I'm going to do this uh, TLP velvet now because I want that to be close here to the dark. I want there to be plenty of it on that dark blue. And I may put a little bit up on the top as well. But we'll put some down here. Then some of our gray purple. And some gold. And then some sea glass. Love this color. Don't want it to dominate because I want there to be plenty of pink and purple in this, but I do really love this kind of turquoise green. Okay, is that enough? Let me put, just for fun, a little bit more of the pink and a little bit more of this interference pigment, the velvet. Those are the main colors that I want to show up, the pink and that velvet. So having them both at the bottom and also at the top means no matter how I swipe, they should be there. All right, one more little torch and then we'll swipe it. So, cell activator. So as I swipe this, I'm not gonna put the tip right in the middle. We're gonna put it over the middle and then as I spin it, I'm going to move it out towards the edge of the canvas. And because this is a square, not a circle, I may need to add additional swipes over those corners. I don't know yet. We will see how it goes. But I'm going to put some cell activator on the back of my palette knife, spread it out. You don't want a really, really thick layer, but you also want there to be enough that it's actually going to work. So I'm going to place it in the middle, touch it gently, and then give it a pretty good spin, I think, because I want to make sure that we have plenty of speed to spin around several times. Wish me luck. Okay, slightly over the center here. Touch it gently. Oh, wow, guys, look at that. That is so pretty. And look at the back of my palette knife. That is gorgeous. But I have to wipe it off, alas. I mean, just look at that. That is really pretty. The cells are quite small, but they're probably gonna grow a bit and we will spin this to stretch everything out. And I was very happy that it spun fast enough that I was able to get a really nice spiral going through there. I was afraid of the, the spinner stopping before I had done a nice good spin, but that looks great. So I'm gonna move these out of the way because when I start spinning, the paint is gonna start flying. Okay, beautiful center, nice and pink. Let me see if I can bring up a few more cells in that white. Well, I got a few. So when you blow with a straw or with your mouth onto the cell activator, what you're doing is you're, you're like stretching out that top layer and making little holes form where the colors underneath can push up through it. So you're just kind of breaking the surface tension there. 
And you see, we got some beautiful cells popping up there. Nice. All right, let's spin this. Wow. Okay, so this is a lot paler than I thought. I was thinking, you know, dark background. We're going to have a lot of that dark color. But then I put so many light colors in it, I almost wish that I had not put so much color because I love the dark. But we have the dark going through there. It is very pretty, and we have some of the dark around the edge, but the prettiest lacing is closer to the middle, so I'm going to stretch that a bit more. So neat! I do love that we've got that dark blue right in the center. So it's very kind of pastel here, and I don't know if that's because the interference pigments haven't showed up yet, or whether my white muted some of my colors. I really don't know. But I love the spiral. Maybe I'll spin it just one more time, because this outer edge I'm not really feeling. Yep, this is it. I didn't want to lose this big pink stripe. And I see, I think this is sea glass right here. I see sort of a greenish layer. So there is definitely striping in it. And I'm very curious to see what it'll look like when it's dry. Let me, oh my gosh, my hands are so messy. Whenever you work with really thick paint too, it just, <laughs> wet wipes are really handy for bloom pores because paper towels don't always cut it. Okay, let me torch it one more time. So that was popping a lot better, I think, because after spinning, our paint layer was much thinner, and so the bubbles were able to pop better. So we have a lot of little speckles in it, dark spots. Sometimes people call those the measles when the base coat comes through. And I don't mind them, especially having some dark in there. So you'll see those when I give you the close-up. If you don't want the measly speckles, you gotta mix your paints way in advance so that you don't have air bubbles in that base layer to come up through your other colors. But I'm really happy with this. Let me give you a close up. Look how much lacing there is on this. It's so uniform and beautiful. So the biggest cells we have are right here in the middle and that's where we have the most pink and I see most gold in there. And then, as we move outwards, it's a lot more kind of purple and pastel, and I'm curious to see whether that will turn shimmery as it dries or not. So you see those layers that I was talking about? Kind of striping as it goes around? So from a distance it looks kind of all the same, but it is almost like a rainbow there. Nice darker line along here. And then these are the little measles spots. And that's just because I torched out those air bubbles. If you mix your paint <laughs> more in advance, you won't have as many air bubbles in your paint. But I think that center is gorgeous. I'm not really sure which way is going to be up. I think I like this way because it's like a pink wave in the center. But we'll see. Let me show you how this looks when it's dry. Okay, it's all dry. So it dried really nicely in that nothing shifted, nothing warped, but as you can see, the color did not really change from when it was wet to when it was dry. This kind of rainbow stripe area, I wondered if, as we saw the metallics shining, whether it would look more colorful, and it doesn't really. In fact, I can't even find 
the blue, the interference pigment that I was talking about, the TLP velvet. Cannot find it at all. Here in the middle I see some of the sea glass along with the gold and some of the other colors by themselves, but I can't find the velvet. So let me just show you, this is a different painting, and this one has been varnished, so obviously it's much shinier, but do you see that blue in the middle? That's the velvet. So it goes from sort of non-existent to shimmering in the light, and it's gorgeous. You see how that changes in the light? So that's what I was hoping to get here, and I don't seem to have gotten it yet. Now, it's possible that when I varnish, that more of that color will show up, because metallics definitely show up better once there's varnish over top of them. But I think part of it may have been, because I put on so much white paint right at the very start, it could be that that velvet just didn't have a dark enough base to really shine against and show up against, because interference pigments, they need something dark for them to be on top of in order to shine that color. So I may try this one again and not put white on, and maybe put less of that gray-purple, and just see if I can get more of those bright colors popping against the dark background. We shall see. Thank you guys for joining me for this video. I certainly had a very successful spin swipe, and I really like Molly's pouring medium. I hope this inspired you to try something new, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys!